and how you doing? Welcome to Hibachi Talk. Gorgo the Tech Sour here. Andrew's still not back. He's off somewhere. I don't even know anymore when he's going to be here. He should be back next week. Anyway, um, grab yourself a libation, grab yourself a chair, join us again for another exciting episode of Hibachi Talk. We have a, we have a thematic theme today. It's football. So our guest today is Corey Rasmussen. Hey, Corey. Nice to see you, buddy. How's it? Yeah, Corey is the uh, former defensive lineman for the University of Hawaii football team. And um, he's going to give us some secrets to some of the things that go on on the line and between the lines and, and such. But uh, it's great to have you on board. So thank, thank you for you. being here. So we always ask our guests when they first come. And the first question is, so where did you go to school? Uh, Kamehameha. Kamehameha. Yeah. Right. Imua. <laughs> So, uh, what year did you graduate from Kamehameha? Uh, 2012. 2012. And did you play football for Kamehameha? Is this yep. a dumb question or what? No, right. Yeah. I think I did. I think you did too. So you played football for Kamehameha. So, so my first question would be, so, um, so how old were you when you first got into football? Uh, I first started right around three and a half, four years old, playing flag football. Playing flag football at yep. four. Yep. Did you know then that you liked the game? Like, what was the thing that that um, motivated you to get involved in football? Um, I think just going to practice, it was fun. And uh, my dad was my coach, so. Yeah, so your, your dad, that helped a little bit, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, we have, we have a slide. It's not, we, I have pictures of you somewhere. <laughs> Wait, I couldn't find them, but um, when, you were, when you were somewhat smaller than what you are now. But, you know, so growing up, your dad played football for Damien. Damien, yeah. Right? What was his position? He was a linebacker. He was a linebacker. He was a linebacker, yeah. So, so the focus when you were three and a half, four years old getting into this game was defense? No. No. I played O-line. Oh, interesting. I played offensive line all the way through the park leagues. Really? Yep. So, I, I, see, I can't even recall that. Yep. So all the way through the park, li park leagues, you were playing offensive line. Yep. So, so um, now your family was very much involved in, in, in football growing up because your brothers got involved with it yep. as well, right? Yep. They Both played as well. Them. Both of them. Um, they decided to take other, other, other approaches to, <laughs> to their careers. But they're all six and change like you. Oh, yeah. They're all big. So. They're all big. So how did that happen? Because I know that your grandparents weren't even five feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> your great grandparents. Good genes. Good genes. Good they genes. Came down the line came somewhere. <laughs> uh, we used to say like all the green bananas there or such. Anyway, I got a picture of you and your um, your family who had a lot to do with you going up and growing up in in your career. So um, so how important do you think family is in um, in all you know you not only you but your brothers and such and having such a a, a solid upbringing. Um, family is everything. I mean. To support you no matter what so even if you mess up they still they're always there for you and uh, uh you can just always count on them yeah so. yeah and you never got into trouble nah <laughs> not at all <laughs> never and you're, no lickings right oh never. never never right never so 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 um what did you enjoy most about um football in the younger in the younger in your earlier years um just that it was fun. It was a game. Uh, I guess as you move up through the different levels of playing, it turns more to uh, like a job. Mm -hmm. So when you're young playing, it's f it's all fun and games. It's you know you don't you're not really worried too much about the wins and losses. Right. And then as you get older, it kind of gets more and more important. But when you're young, it's you're just having fun out there with your friends, pretty much. So, the, do you, do you um, do, do you learn a lot about um, uh, teamwork and things? Did that start early? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, in the younger levels, they basically you're basically trying to have a bunch of kids work together, and I guess that's it. It plants the seed for teamwork, which you need as you move up. So, and 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 do you think bringing bringing this forward in your career is going to help? Oh yeah. Most definitely, yep. yeah. So, so, um, so t the teamwork, the teamwork aspect, and, and so on. So, what? Is, so, give me a, the thing that the thing you like the best, and the thing you like the worst about playing football. Um, the thing I like the best is just the camaraderie and the friends that you make. Um, and I think the worst is getting injured or the off season that's about it yeah the off season right? yeah yeah getting 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 pounded so um over the course of your career in 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 football figuring at 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 four oh there's a nice picture that's look you have a, you have a tux on <laughs> <laughs> i think i think that was when you that were was the high school hall of fame the 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 one with Mufi. With Mufi. Oh, okay i have a picture with you and Mufi coming up <laughs> later so that the high school hall of fame so you were in the high school hall of fame yep 
You know, the, um, the, I just went side sidetracked on me because they had the, um, the Polynesian Bowl. Um, wait, that's high school, though. That's high school. That's right. High school. So I was gonna say, wait, you, can you go to that? But only as uh, no, only as an no. observer. <laughs> So, so the camaraderie part. Now, how many of the of the of the kids now that are young adults like you, do you still think? Do you still see around around? Oh, a lot. I mean, they all we all went separate ways as we got older. But like when we see each other, we're always like, oh, hey, and get us together, and we'll talk forever. And you talk forever. Oh right? yeah, right. So um, now your 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 dad was your coach. Yep. Coming through the park leagues, he coached me all the way to I want to say seventh grade. Seventh grade, yeah. but he not he didn't coach just you. Yeah, no, not just me. He was he was coached on the team, and uh, but we did have a lot of uh, private practice sessions. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> well, you're, you're close at hand. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. So so um, and was your mom involved in the league at all? Yeah, she was the president of the Ever Beach Cardinals. So so she was the president of that for yeah. how long do you think she did that? <laughs> Years, years, a long time. I don't know. We're there. We, we all came up through that. Uh, the, me and my brothers, we all came up through that program. So, they they were there for a while. So it's, it, I'm, I I would have to venture to say that you know programs like that, whether it be the football or the baseball, soccer, whatever, they're pretty good at keeping keeping you off the street. Oh yeah, I think that's um, that's probably part of their goal, and I think it gives kids a, uh, the opportunity to go do something, keep them busy. Mm -hmm. I think uh, by staying busy, they'll stay out of trouble. Right. And there's more to it than just out there um, playing the game. You've got to study this game. Oh, yeah, but I think that comes later later in the okay. in your career. Uh, I think when you're young, it's just about having fun, and then it's a good way for you to get tired and go to sleep and <laughs> keep you out of your parents' hair. So, yeah. So you, I mean, you got to fit your homework into all that as well. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so um, I got a little, another shot here. So this is a kind of a, a shot that was taken of, um, I think it was you guys this year um, at University of Hawaii, and um, a lot of the you met a lot of a lot of good guys, right? Oh yeah, that's a that's a solid crew right there. Yeah, we're gonna, so so the solid the solid crew. Um, t tell me how this how it was. So you you. Um, <coughs> Went from the public school, not public schools, from the from the Ever Beach leagues, and then you ended up at Kamehameha, and you ended up playing for Kamehameha. Yeah. So, but you, play, I thought you played baseball. Uh, yeah, I played uh, in the off season of football when I was young. I think I stopped playing right around my freshman year, mm -hmm. and then the sole focus just went football purely on, on the football yeah so um, now did you did you know at that point in time or was there any point in time in this where you said I'm gonna focus on football and football is gonna enable me to go to college uh, yeah right after I stopped playing baseball that was kind of the uh, in a decision-making process uh, my parents and we all uh, knew that I had a brighter future well, felt that I had a brighter future in football, and I just loved the game, so I made the decision to just focus on one, one and, sport. And focus, and focus on the one sport. Yeah. So you focused on the one sport, and then um, you uh, uh, saw, your, saw, saw this as a vehicle for you to be able to go to, to college, yep. to university. Um, you're not exactly the right, richest family in the world, so it's not like you're sitting on a, a boatload of money. Yeah. Um, and, and, and lo and behold, you started to get some, some scholarship opportunities. Yeah, and you mentioned Mufi earlier, and it's so so <laughs> funny that um, I have this picture of you when um, you got a scholarship from from Mufi. Yep. Did he ever pay you? Ah, uh, the answer is yes. Yeah, <laughs> he did. Oh, I remember. <laughs> Yeah, so you, so you ended up um, um, getting a scholarship there, and then you ended up getting um, uh, uh, other scholarship offers from other universities. So what other universities started talking to you? Um, there was multiple schools that talked to you. They send you a bunch of mail and stuff, and then um, the schools that offered me were Utah, Colorado, Hawaii, UH, uh, UW, and Arizona. 
Yeah, I think that's yeah. all of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, those were the the full ride offers. Now you have a you have an interesting story about uh, Norm Chow because um, wasn't Utah um, recruiting you and yeah. weren't you? So give us the story that, about Norm Chow and how that unfolded. Uh, Coach Chow was actually the I want to say the OC at Utah, and so when I was getting recruited there, I was talking to him, talking to him, but I ended up going to Colorado. And when I decided to come home, he was one of the people I called, and he, with open arms, welcomed me to come back home. And so, so how long was it after you interviewed with him? He announced that he was going to go to the University of Hawaii. Oh, I think it was in like a, a one month span. I went up there on my visit, committed to Utah. I mean, to Colorado. And then right after that, I found out he was going to Hawaii. He's going it to Hawaii. It was kind of funny. It was kind of funny. So yeah, it was like he was there. He never said anything to you either about him, him nope. the potential of coming to Hawaii. No. Nope. So then you went. You went to. You went to uh, Colorado. You got redshirted there, and then the the, the home was calling you back. So yep. it was time to get back home. Yeah. And, and lo and behold, here you got here you got Norm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Coach Chow is the man. I still love him. Yeah. yeah he, um, so was he recruiting you for O-line or D-line? Uh, no, I was getting recruited as a D-lineman. Okay. Shifting over. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> it must have been nice to come back and see him. Yeah, it was. I mean, I'm just uh, glad he gave me the opportunity to come play at home. So. Right. So then when you came back, you because you transferred back, I had to uh, sit one year. You had to sit one year, and you were, and and that's a big decision for you because you were shifting your scholarship. You didn't know if you would get another one with UH, but you were right. willing to take the risk to come back home. Yep, uh, I think it was just the right fit. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I personally think it was the right fit too because um, uh, it w worked out worked out <laughs> very very well. So um, so you came into that you came to the into the Chow era when Chow was <coughs> new, yeah, and you were new and totally rebuilding. And you were left Colorado, which was doing the same, right? right? They were in the rebuilding stage. Right. And I think um, after you left Colorado, or no, before you left Colorado, most of the um, uh, coaches all left. The uh, oh yeah, we had a there was a switch in staff. They fired the head coach, and then they brought in almost a whole new staff. So so anyone that was involved in your recruitment wasn't there anymore. Yeah. Nobody. So everybody nobody. was gone. So everybody was gone, and they were starting to rebuild. Yep. Even the athletic director, I think, was gone. Yep. Too. The AD went maybe, I want to say, a few months after the head coach. Yeah. So what do you learn from that? When with that that kind of thing happening, it's like the entire management team in a company being let go, right? And all the workers that have been hired and brought on are now sitting wondering what's going on. How does how, how did that hit you? Um, that's just. It was the first time for me seeing that kind of thing, but it just shows you uh, what kind of career that is. And if you choose it, it can be rough. And a lot of coaches really love the game, and they're willing to stick that stuff out. So. Right. And then um, <coughs> many of them moved on and, and have done well where they've gone. Oh, yeah. So it's just it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. So that's a management 101 that I don't think you can get at school. No. Right? no you got way. it because you went to play football, but you never got that by going studying that in a class. Right. Right. Yeah. So, well, that's cool. So, anyway, um, we're gonna we're gonna take a break in a minute, and we'll talk about the next generation. And then we're gonna talk about between the lines. Give us some inside scoops and some of the things that happen when you actually play this game. So, anyway, this is Gordo the Texar here with Corey Rasmussen, former defensive lineman, captain of the University of Hawaii football team, and we'll be back in about a minute. Aloha! This is Rez McJackal. The University of Hawaii football team under Rolovich is going to kick butt this season. In case you didn't understand me, University of Hawaii football team is going to kick butt under Rolovich this season. So be sure to follow us on Think Tech Hawaii and Hibachi Top. I'll be at every game. And remember, aloha! Hello, I'm Crystal from Quok Talk. I've got a new show here. You've got to tune in, check out my topics on sensitive, provocative female issues. So Tuesday mornings, 10 o'clock. Don't miss it. It's going to be fun and dangerous. Aloha, this is Kelee Akina with the weekly Ehana Kako. Let's work together program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. Movers and shakers and great ideas. Join us. We'll see you then. Aloha. Welcome to Hibachi Talk. Gordo the Tech Star here, and I'm here with my good old buddy, Corey Rasmussen, who's talking about his uh, life in football. 
um, from age three and a half on up to how old are you now? Make 23 on the first of 23. So 20 years plus you've played this game. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. So you've played it for 20 plus years. Now, what about the next generations of Rasmussen? Do you think they're going to be? So here, I, first of all, so explain this picture to, to the viewers. What is it we got going here? Uh, that's me kissing my son before our game. Okay. That's what that is. Yeah. So next generation, three and a half? What do you think? You're going to be coaching him? Um, I hope so. I don't know. I don't know, got to talk to his mom about it, but I hope I, <laughs> I hope I am. I mean, I look forward to it. Uh, now that me playing is over, I'm, I look forward to watching him grow up and hopefully play. So Yeah, that'd be kind of fun. That'd be kind of fun. So now we're going to talk about, about the, the game itself and some of the inside <coughs> stories and things that go on within the game. Because, you know, you played on that line for 20, 20 years, and now you get up through high school and you get into the, into the college ranks. And this, it's pretty heavy duty when you're in the college ranks. And, and you played some amazing schools. I mean, oh, yeah. think about who you played against. Ohio State, Michigan, um, just down the line. So, so what are some of the things that viewers should be watching for when they watch this game at, at the line? Because everybody's usually looking for the pass, the quarterback, or whatever. But um, I think the Super Bowl was a good example of how defense can really upset yep. the card. So what, what kind of things do you, should they be looking for? Um, I think they just got to watch the mentality. If you watch those linemen, they're, what, a yard and a half, a yard apart, and they're finding out every play and just hitting each other. That's where all the action is at. Like People watch the widescreen cut-ups. You see all the receivers going out, DBs covering. But if you just watch in that box all the, the aggression and emotion going on and the fighting, that's where all the action is pretty much on a football right. field. Yeah, and you guys don't st talk smack to each other at all, right? Oh, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's just one part of the game. I mean, the game is mental and physical, so. So what what kinds of so you um, what kind of things do you do to prepare? So you got you got a 300 pound lineman across from you. You were a 300 pound lineman. What things do you do to prepare to, to be able to handle those line persons that are across from you, lineman across from you? Uh, a lot of practice. Uh, that position. A lot of people think it's just about brute force and all that, but it's mainly technique. I mean, coach, your coaches preach it a lot. Beat them with technique, and if you can become a master of your craft, then you can pretty much take on anybody, and if they're a master of their craft, it makes for a good show. Right, right. So they um, and um, they don't necessarily have to be all that big. No, I think the way the uh, the game is evolving now, there's a lot of speed into it. It's not just big guys hitting each other. I mean, they're big, but they can move. And so I think the way the game is changing now, you'll see guys who aren't as heavy, but they're twice as fast. So. Right. Yeah, running those four something oh, yeah. 40s and their yeah. linemen. So, um, what about the, the hand techniques and things like that? You know, I, I was would see you. You're or a lot of players. Their fingers are all taped up. Some are taped a certain way. Um, uh, yeah, the again, your head coach has preached that you got to have quick hands uh, when you're playing. Um, yeah, a lot of people will, will tape up our fingers and stuff just because they're constantly getting jammed. They're stuck in jerseys, stuck in helmets, and it's. Just part of the game, I guess, really. So, so now, uh, speaking of jerseys, and yeah, this is kind of like an untold story. I know you're gonna you're gonna do this. There's some things happens with with jerseys because you know that you can you can kind of grab one, right, and and pull on it. So, what kind of things would someone might do to um, prevent that from happening? Ah, uh, some people might double side duct tape their jerseys to their shoulder pads, but <laughs> Velcro, but that's. I don't know about that. No, I no. just heard about it. You just heard about it, yeah. right? So, so um, how much film do you think you watched over the over the course? Oh, every day. I mean, really, it's kind of like a game with yourself. Uh, you're trying to figure out. It's like a game of chess. You're yeah. trying to figure out what they're doing, when they're doing it, and why. And you want to be able to uh, know what they're doing before they even do it. And that's that's how you win football games now. And coaches will preach, preach, preach about watching film, and it's hours. It's hours. It's hours. So if you ever, like, maybe the way someone um, uh, uh, moves their hands? Yeah, you I mean, when you're watching film, you're watching for schemes and stuff like that. But what you're really watching for is, like, little cues that can tell you when, when they're going to do certain things. Mm -hmm. And that's just, it takes time. But... It, it helps in the long run. Give, give an example of some of the cues that, that you've made, you've 
you observe it with some opponents across the line from you? Um, there was a, a center we played against, and when it was a pass, his hand was up, and he would wiggle his hand. And when it was a run, it was on his knee. Just little things like, like that. that. Yeah, that's what you just, it'll help you. It'll help you. Yeah. You picked it up in the film. Yeah. Right. So, and do you, do you watch film by yourself, or you guys do it together, or how does that work? Um, a little bit of both. Uh, we usually get together as a, as a defense, and then we'll get together as a D-line, and then a lot of us older guys will watch with the younger guys, then we'll watch with ourselves, then we'll go home and we'll watch by ourselves, and then one-on-one -on -one with the coaches. It just all depends how much time you really want to put into it. Okay, so now we're talking about commitment here. This is a, this commitment is a, um, uh, that's something else, right? So now you're doing this, but you're still in school and you still got to get your grades. Yeah, that's why uh, when, you go, when you're going into college, they'll tell you it's going to be a lot of work. Um, you're going to be a student athlete, and they really push the, the student part because you never know when the career is going to end and you got to fall back on something. And right. Well, the, you know, it, it, football was the vehicle for you to get your college right. education. And speaking of which, what, what, uh, you graduated already. Yeah, I have a bachelor's in communications and a bachelor's in sociology. And I'm going to ask you, what was your GPA? Uh, right around 3 3. Wait, you're a lineman. You're not supposed to be that high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so 3 3, double major. So, and you graduated in when? December. In December? Yeah. Wow. So um, <laughs> now you, you, um, uh, you look pretty good on that shot. <laughs> <laughs> who, who are the guys that are there with you? Uh, that's Penetito, uh, McCunny, and Remy. That's Remy. our D line right there, the D line seniors. That's your D line seniors, yeah. yeah. So where did they all go? Where are they, where are they now? Do you know? Uh, well, Kiko, he's a senior, but he got one more year. He just graduated. I think he's a VAMR major. Uh, McCunny, he's uh, training up in Seattle for the pro day coming out. And uh, awesome. Remy is enjoying time with his family. Right? Yeah. Uh, good. Now, they're, um, so only Kiko's here on island. Yeah, so Kiko will have, uh, he's going to play this season. So this will so be his last year. This is going to be his. This is going to be his last year, boy. How does that? You, you mentioned how that feels. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh. So so let's talk about this last year. So you you know last year the first game was in Australia. Second game was in Michigan. I mean, how was that at the end of those first two two games? Um, it was an experience. I think it was good for uh, the team in general just to experience playing in that kind of atmosphere and. Um, the traveling to Australia was awesome. That was cool. Uh, and I think that just, that just, uh, I think it set us on the right track for the year just because mm -hmm. it showed us the caliber of players that are out there and what we need to get up to and kind of helped us put our head on straight and get us on track for the season that we had. So, so you think that's the right thing to do? You know, people say, why are we putting, you know, University of Hawaii up against teams like Michigan and Ohio State and such, but do you think that's the right thing to do? Um, I think that all depends on how your team feels and how the coach feels. I mean, when Coach Rollo came in, the schedule was set already. We were playing Michigan, we were playing Cal, we were playing whoever. But I think uh, as a team, we had that mentality like, we don't care who we're going to play, we're just going to go. And I think that's the good part about having a lot of these, uh, having local kids stay here and play because a lot of us are raised in that attitude where we, we, can t we think we can take on anything. Right. And that kind of blended uh, help with the whole team because now everybody felt like they could take on anybody. And uh, Coach Rolo was on board and we weren't going to back down. So. And, and, and with Rolo on board, you went once again through another management change, right? Oh, yeah. So you know, you were, what year was this when, in, your, in your career now? How, many, how much time did you have left to play? I only played, I had one spring that I didn't play in because I was uh, going through their rehab and stuff, and then I had this past season. So In the past season. And so you went from, from now Chow was the, the head coach, and then you shifted over to Rolovich. Who you didn't know, I don't think. Did you know him at all? Uh, I knew him. I knew of him. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, and then he transitioned. So, um, and it was a big, a big shift for everybody. Right. 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 You had all new, new um, assistant coaches and, and things like that. Yeah. So, um, how was Rolo? Oh, he's great. I think um, the, they're lucky to have him there, um, and I'm excited for the seasons to come. And shout out Coach Lange, he's the new DC, just found that out today. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah, you uh, heard it here first or second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they're they're gonna have a great season, and uh, now I can say as an alumni, I, I'm more than excited to watch. And yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you have family come, you, but you're alumni, but there, isn't there someone in your family who's also going to be playing for uh, UH this year? Yeah, you know, there's the, my little cousin Manu will be playing uh, corner, I believe, down here, so. So how big is your little cousin Manu? <laughs> uh, maybe 5'11", oh. but he's, uh, he's one of those speed guys, so he's, uh, I look forward to watching him too, and. I'm just excited. It's, just exci yeah, just excited, excited for the game and, and, and for everything that's happening. So, so um, coming up on the, we'll talk a little bit about the bowl game because you know coming up on that bowl game, or coming up the game before the bowl game, um, <laughs> well, you guys were hanging by a thread there to to bring this one out. Yeah, I think that was our uh, our mo this year. <laughs> Cut it close to the end and win it, but hey, a win is a win. We'll take it how well we took it how however we could and. I think that just showed that uh, our team had a lot of fight in it, and I, I credit that to a lot of the seniors, or all the seniors, because we were there. All of us pretty much came through the program together, and they, we all tried our best to keep the team together, and just we wanted to set a foundation for all these years to come. And I think the bowl game was a great way to. A great way to great yeah. great way to great way to end it. But you know, I, I got to ask you. You guys were down two touchdowns very fast in that first quarter. I mean, how do you pull a rabbit out of the hat on that one? Uh, just, I would say resiliency. Uh, our offense came through and our defense, as soon as we get the ball rolling, we were usually pretty good. So, yep, as soon as it got rolling, we were. Now, what did you say to the defense or any of the defense? I mean, you're the defensive captain. You're already down 14 points with still got a bunch, a bunch of the first quarter to go. <laughs> uh, you just got to stay positive. Uh, you learn that coming through. You got to keep everybody motivated, stay positive, and people will respond. And basically, you just got to lead by example. OK, so, so speaking of that message going forward, so just closing circles. This is a shot we took at the end of the, uh, end of the bowl game. There's a lot of family members there. You? Yeah, there's a whole bunch in that place. So nice shirts. So anyway, so now <coughs> message going forward. So message that you would give to you know young adults, you know kids getting into the into the into the sports, whether it be baseball or football or whatever. What message would you give to them? Uh, just stick with it. Uh, when things get hard, don't don't give up. Just uh, keep going and. Things will will happen. Everything happens for a reason, and if you stay focused, keep working at it, positive things will come out of it. And I think it's uh, sports is a great way to get your education, no matter what it is. And it's uh, it'll teach you lessons that you can't learn from any book or parenting. It's so it's a different experience. All right, and we're going to leave that, close out on that message. And I gave you the heads up on what we do at the end of every show. So one, two, three. As remember, at the end of what I bought you talk. How are you doing? doing?